hello hashtag sms channel don't be gossy from at hogoza in the east range thank you for this opportunity my question for you seeing that from a young age you had an opportunity to play for victims like as a cheese leads and captain bafana bafana um any chances that he might um start his own academy like um to empower young boys and young girls from all, all over south africa or uh, maybe all over the world i don't know since he was not really limited to only south africa the second question it has to do with the var system does it think south africa is ready for a var does it think we can implement it seeing that overseas uh, people have dubbed it um controversial Hi, Nkosi. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, I would love to to have had an opportunity uh, to actually run my own um, academy, but uh, I've committed myself, you know, to different brands that have projects, you know, uh, in the community, uh, in corporate and in, 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 in football uh, worldwide. Uh, for me, I've seen a lot of talent and I'm passionate about the grassroots football and development of, of young stars. Yes, possibly in a later stage, I might look at that, but I think it takes a lot of work, especially that I love to be hands-on and I would like to see the talent myself and make sure that it produces, you know, what it's meant for. So, yes, I don't rule that out, possibly in the future. Uh, and I will, I, will, I will look into it. I mean, it's, it, it's absolutely fantastic. I think it will give me joy. But at the moment, I'm still engaged and committed, you know, uh, to, to, to some of the, uh, the brands, you know, in the country doing some good work, especially that I'm still with Leeds United, you know, uh, uh, we still have a relationship and, and uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Thank you. And the second one uh, regarding uh, the VAR, uh, I think since the introduction of VAR, we've seen the inconsistency. You know, uh, especially in the in the big leagues, in the Premier League and and, and, and overseas. Uh, it's, for me, you know, uh, I'm a little bit skeptic because of, well, as I said, the inconsistency. And again, it's uh, I think it, there's a lot of uh, financial input in technology today. And since our football needs to grow, you know, you rather uh, invest, you know, uh, in the development of football in the country, you know, in the lower divisions, you know, making sure that uh, we can compete in the highest level. But uh, VAR for, for South Africa, uh, not really a big fan. Hey Lucas, uh, my name is Master from Rockville in Soweto. I just have two questions for you. The very first one is, uh, do you still keep contact with some of the players that you played with in the Leeds United team around the 90s? Especially Tony Eboa, uh, David O'Leary, uh, Kerry Speed, who was my favorite. The second question I have is, why do you think uh, in South Africa we are not able to export a lot of players to major European leagues. What is it that we need to do in order for that to happen? Because during your era, we had you, the likes of Phil Massing, and later we had the Benis and the Quinton Fortunes. So why is it now it is not happening? What is your view on that one? Thank you. Hi, Master. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, we've had a, a great relationship in the team. I think we've bonded well. And we've managed to achieve, you know, um, not just as a team, but as a club. Fantastic club, fantastic people. I mean, the players that were there, very uh, 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 committed to the club, great quality in, in those young stars. I mean, I mean, you can imagine uh, having Tony Boa, you know, uh, unfortunately, Gary Speed passed on. 
but uh, he was in, in, in our team, you know, Smith. Uh, and, and we brought glory, you know, uh, at, 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 at Leeds United where we played, you know, in the highest uh, uh, league, you know, in terms of, 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 the, of the Champions League and, and, and European League, where we've really brought big names back at Ellen Road and, and the great knights at Ellen Road. And, and we formed a special uh, relationship with all the players. And yes, I'm still in contact with with people like Tony Yaboa, you know, and I was, I was really lucky that that relationship has gone even further thanks to social media that we can manage to chat and contact each other you know people like uh, Nigel Martin uh, they, uh, Dominic Matteo yeah, who uh, I talk to them more often and and Antonio Boa who still uh, kept in shape and and looking good and I think uh, it's a special group of players a special team and a great bond and the second question uh, about about the exporting uh, uh, players, I think it was a different era. It was a different breed of players, uh, and I think the time was right because the quality that we had at that time it wasn't about the money, you know, when um, it was about the passion and the love of the game. You know, and, 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 and we had a lot of talent. I mean, players like Mark Fish uh, played in Lazio, David Nyati. I mean, you name that 96 team. All of us in that team played in Europe. And, uh, and that's where we experienced success. You know, and, and coming to the national team, it was just quality. Uh, every position uh, and, and, and thanks to Clive by bringing everybody together. Uh, we don't have consistency, you know, uh, especially in our clubs. There's a lot of, for me, uh, for, uh, a lot of foreigners in very crucial, crucial positions where, you know, uh, top scorers, you know, top midfielders. And I think if we can look to invest you know, our youngsters in producing players that can compete in the highest level and go overseas. Uh, because it needs a lot of hard work, not just talent, but character. Because it's tough uh, once you, you start playing abroad. I mean, for me, it was not easy to adapt at first uh, because of the environment. And uh, I mean, having to play full-time football, training from morning until late in the afternoon. You know, it was it was very tough, but you know, through the games and through hard work, you know, uh, perseverance, uh, of manage, you know, uh, to dig deep and and work hard, realizing you know it's once in a lifetime opportunity in representing the country overseas, which is a great opportunity that. I uh, still advise players today, or the current players, you know, uh, perseverance uh, of manage, you know, uh, to dig deep and and work hard, realizing, you know, it's once in a lifetime opportunity in representing the country overseas, which is a great opportunity that. I uh, still advise players today, or the current players, you know, uh, to go and 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 hone their uh, uh, their careers overseas because that's where you want to be. If you want to be a football player, you know, aim to play at the highest level. You know, play in the World Cup. Aim to play in the World Cup. Aim to play in the Champions League. I mean, Pesito is a great example, and I think. Uh, uh, for us, if we can get the young players, especially, you know, to go play overseas, you know, where they can actually uh, experience, have uh, gain experience and the character, because it molds you not only as a footballer but as a person. And and coming back here, I think uh, you can contribute a lot. So, for me, big clubs. 
uh, have to look into young stars and looking into developing uh, local players to play and compete in, in the ASD level, not just to play in the national team, but go abroad. Hi, my name is Thabo Chatali. I'm from Protea North, a father of two daughters. Uh, Lucas Katebe, I forever, you have forever been my uh, role model. A question to you is, uh, you contested to become president of the South African Football Association and your contestation was, quest was questioned because of you are not affiliated to any um, uh, 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 committee with, at, at local level. I just want to find out, are you still pursuing that uh, ambition of you becoming president or playing a role in the South African football uh, association, in the football association fraternity? Hey Tabo, uh, thank you very much, uh, Fitch. Um Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, uh, since you know I've um, uh, retired from the game, I wanted to give back into the game again. Since our South African football has played a massive role in in my success, you know, uh, as a footballer. So I think one of my contribution was to be part or to play a role yeah, uh, uh, in, in in our structures of football in this country and uh, yes i'm still i still have that ambition uh, already uh, I'm making plans already talking to people uh, in uh, uh, making sure that um, i prepare well uh, because I believe that uh, uh, football grows, football has become young, and I think we need new ideas. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, the guys that are there now, especially the president, uh, Mr. Danny Jordan, he's done a great job. I think uh, they've done as much as they can, and I think it's time for change, and I think change is, I believe change is good. And, uh, uh, you know, if I can really have that opportunity to play a role. And I, I think, uh, I mean, the guys that are there now, especially the president, uh, Mr. Danny Jordan, he's done a great job. I think uh, they've done as much as they can. And I think it's time for change. And I think change is, I believe change is good. And, uh, uh, you know, if I can really have that opportunity to play a role, you know, uh, forget the politics, you know, forget, you know, all this other uh, stuff, you know, and, and, you know, let's look at growing our football, let's look at improving our football, you know, let's, let's focus, you know, our efforts into making South African football the best, uh, 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 like, uh, years before where we won the Af uh, Africa Cup of Nations, and and I believe that we can achieve that. But we need to change the structures. We need to change how we think. And I still believe that uh, uh, we can do that. Yes, I'm still interested, and then um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we soon uh, will uh, come up with a proper uh, uh, structure. Uh, to make sure that uh, 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 we, we get involved. Hello, my name is Oetu Ndinisa. I'm from Pretoria East. My question to you, Lucas Khatebe, is when you went overseas to play for Leeds United, of course they had a different style of playing. How did you adjust to their style of football? Thank you. Hi, Oetu. Thanks for for that uh, nice question. Um, I, I can say that uh, it was never an easy transition uh, to, to, to go and play overseas, especially, you know, where uh, the conditions are different. And to adapt, uh, it took, I think it took me about two years, which I think for me, it, 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 it was hard work, it was challenging, uh, I think my first season was hard because of the injury and again to to adapt to that level of the game 
where it was quick and the expectations are very high uh, at, at that level. And I remember, I mean, with the, the weather conditions had a lot of effect, you know, uh, on me because um, at, at one stage I, uh, we went to play a reserve game where, you know, always we have to keep fit and make sure that uh, you're on top of your fitness, especially if you haven't been uh, playing regular in the first team. And uh, uh, when the game started, in 20 minutes into the game, it started snowing. And to be honest, I, I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. Uh, to be honest, I was frozen. My face was just frozen. But, but that what it needed for, 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 for one, you know, to make it, you know, in the highest level. There's, there's different challenges in injuries, in weather conditions, food, friends, and uh, as well, it was my first time having playing fully professional football where the training is, is hard. I'm telling you, when I say hard, I think they, they drill you to the ground, you know, to make sure that you're on top of the fitness. But, uh, but, uh, you know, through resilience, you know, I've worked hard, you know, and uh, I think with Phil being there, it was really helpful. But but after he left, you know, uh, it was just me and some of the players. And it was, it, was, it was really tough because you have to earn the respect and earn uh, uh, that commanding position, especially being a regular in the first team. And, and to be honest, having worked hard and going through injuries. I've managed to to adapt, you know, and become a Yorkshireman. And I think the family as well helped a lot. Having my, my, my girlfriend then, you know, and, and later having my kids. And I ended up spending 12 years where I thought I wouldn't have made it. But it was a, it was fantastic at the end. And, and even today, we still have a relationship with the players, still have a relationship with the, with the club. You know, I get invitation now and then, which is fantastic. And that shows, you know, where the appreciation, you know, of, of your hard work and, and, and your contribution towards uh, a football club. So it was never easy. And uh, I think it needs a lot of heart and it needs a lot of hard work because talent only will never make it. I mean, the values in terms of respecting uh, 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 football, it will respect you back. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rose Muela and I'm from Midrand. I hope everyone is keeping safe during these trying times. My question to the legendary Lucas Khadebe would be, sir, if you were a coach of any team, anywhere in the world and we're all facing the lockdown period how would you best strategize for your team if it was at the bottom of the league or if your team is at the top of the league basically which plans would you put into place once the lockdown is over and the league resumes how would you best plan for your team if it's at the top or at the bottom of the league thank you very much hi rose uh Muela, um it's a very difficult question. Wow. <laughs> and this is the current situation at the moment, you know, uh, which is very tough. As you know, that uh, as footballers, you know, we, we spend most of the time outdoors instead of uh, indoors. So it's quite challenging. But as a manager for a club that's in this situation, I'll, I think it's to, 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 social, to, to social media or to technology that you can at least contact or communicate with your players to make sure that they they, they stay uh, fit. Uh, because one of the things is that, I mean, one day not training, you know, yeah, you can take that. But I mean, uh, if it's if it takes even longer than that, you know, it's a challenge uh, mentally and physically uh, because, you know, the players, especially if they're training, they eat a lot. And, 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 and again, uh, if they have to focus into the game, they've got to be fit. So, so I'll make sure that, uh, you know, I uh, focus on those elements where 
psychologically they fit and they wherever they are they're looking after themselves so you're gonna have to try to 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 trust uh, them as individuals in terms of not gaining weight uh, and 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 when it it, it resumes again i'll make sure that uh, mentally and physically we're strong uh, uh, make sure that uh, the way we finished you know, we try and get them to that level, you know, spending more time uh, with them and and, and, and and try that to motivate, to motivate them because we'll all be coming from the same situation, you know, uh, all the teams and, and a, a good start. And I think for me, a good start would be much better to finish top. I mean, if we last, it's gonna be tough because you're gonna have to fight relegation. Uh, to go up and gaining points, uh, it's it's not easy at all. I mean, let's take, for instance, Liverpool. I think Liverpool, they had the commanding position, you know, uh, uh, and and I think coming back, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, the goal is to make sure that they get the consistency back in in winning the the, the first uh, few games, few games. Gain confidence again and get get fit by the game. Eita hola. My name is Gabriel Takadu. I currently live in Brody Port Velkayevo. I just have two questions for Bra Lucas Hadebe. Uh, my first question is um, when you got to Leeds United, you sustained an injury which kept you on the sidelines for like I think a season or so. I just want to know, what is it that kept you motivated during that time? I mean, taking into account that you are away from home, away from your friends, and away from colleagues that you were familiar with while you were playing for the other team here in South Africa. And my second question to you, Bra Lucas, is um, when you became team captain, what is it that helped you to stay grounded? What is it that helped you to stay grounded so that you don't end up getting caught up in the trappings of fortune and fame, which came with being a professional soccer player in one of the biggest leagues in the world. Thank you. Hey, ita, 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 Kabelo. I uh, hope you're well, my man. I hope you're staying safe. Uh, but great uh, question that is. Um, I think, you know, one of the lowest points in my career was 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 getting injured. Uh, to be honest, at uh, my first attempt uh, in the Premier League, and honestly, it was tough going. It was depressing. Um, it was really, really uh, uh, tough. You know, I mean, uh, taking in consideration, you know. Um, it's my first time. It's towards the end of the season, and the and the, the weather conditions, you know, it's hard. And I was never uh, actually released to go home, you know, at the end of the season. It took me. It took me about a season. I I, I got injured uh, well in '94, and I spent the end of '94 and. The whole of nine, um, almost the whole of '95, uh, and I was lucky, to be honest, to play in the Africa Cup of Nations. Very, very fortunate, you know. Uh, I think I played a lot for that anyway. And I think m when I was working with the physios, uh, they didn't have faith or they didn't think I'll come back. And and, and looking after the the knee. After the operation, even myself, I was doubtful uh, that uh, I, I will I will play football again. I mean, by the way, is the injury that retired Paul uh, uh, and, and and in those days, I think I had a successful uh, operation, and the hard part was uh, rehab you know, and physio, which was very, very difficult. Um, first, it was the timing, uh, because everybody had gone home, it's the end of the season, I had a plaster on my leg, 
uh, it's me alone, you know, uh, at, uh, in a foreign country, you know, uh, and it was a test of character, uh, to be honest. And uh, I remember at some point, uh, I really wanted to, to go home. I begged the club at least to give me a week, you know, just to go and recuperate and see family and stuff. Maybe it will lift my spirits. But I got a little bit depressed, you know, and thank to my girlfriend who came over and at least, you know, I mean, every day uh, it was treatment from morning till afternoon because I think uh, they wanted to get me back ready for the next season which meant that i can't go home you know uh, i have to i have to stay for treatment for the whole summer uh, and it, it it was hard i think one of the things that kept me going is it's 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 the, it's having realized that it, this is once in a lifetime opportunity you know to play you know uh, in, in the premier league and to have an opportunity and represent those that I've left behind from the other club, which, <laughs> which I think it, they inspired me a lot because obviously, you know, uh, it, it could have been uh, somebody else apart from me. And, uh, and, 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 and for me, you know, I appreciated that. And, and, and I've worked hard, uh, uh, at, you know, in the rehab, you know, when I remember telling myself that, you know, I'd rather fail having tried uh, uh, rather than not tried at all. So I kept going. Uh, and I, I remember uh, people home phoning me. And yes, I did get homesick. Yes, I did get depressed. But, but I worked hard uh, mentally than physically to make sure that I focus on getting better, you know, with my injury. It, that, that's a tough one and the, uh, the the second one I think for me it was a great honor uh, to be appointed captain you know uh, at such a a, 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 a white uh, uh, dominated club you know uh, uh, Leeds United where I think I was captain for for, for four years which were the Champions League years where the club was successful and uh, and that for me it was it, it I took it as as a learning as a learning curve and I learned a lot from every individual at the club it was a big responsibility you know because you're not just a, a team captain you're a club captain where you have so much responsibility in all the individuals, you know, in terms of of players, in terms of making sure we every problem that we, you know, and making sure that I lead by example. I think that's how I gained respect uh, because the way I played, the the way I trained is the way I played on and off the field of play. You know, I respected the game, respected. Uh, 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 the players, you know, uh, and, and for me, uh, I, 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 I led by appreciation, and, and and I think, you know, the dressing room, you know, was behind me all the way, and 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 it was absolutely pleasure, you know, uh, to to have played for such a great club, you know, where uh, that has achieved a lot, and 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 played in the Champions League, and. Uh, as a captain, you know, as the club, and it was a great honor uh, for me that they've made me a, a different person after football, appreciating what football has done for me and, and, and realizing uh, uh, and making me uh, an icon and a role model in the youngsters. Uh, and coming back home and 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 and, and, and making and, and giving me that uh, passion, you know, uh, of seeing lots of our oh, youngsters uh, playing abroad. Hello, uh, my name is Musegai Sengosi. I'm from Pumalang. Uh, my question to you, Lucas Hadebe, is: 
Uh, wouldn't you like to be a Bafana Bafana coach one day since you were a captain of the national team back in the days? Thank you. Hey, Thomas guys. Uh, guys in course. <laughs> Can I call you Mus? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think um, it, is ex it is expected that, uh, you know, uh, once you retire as a footballer, you become a coach of some sort. But uh, for me, yes, uh, yeah, I consider that uh, early in my retirement. But again, uh, my passion uh, lies on development, development of football, you know, in the grassroots level. But again, you know, having been home, back home, and having had a stint at, uh, at Safa, I realized uh, why our football is not progressing, uh, especially in terms of, of, of coaches, you know, being successful. Uh, I knew and I've seen the structures were not right for that. So I didn't want to be a statistic, but I had an opportunity, uh, you know, to do that, where, you know, uh, obviously, you know, it has to be about uh, your terms, you know, which for me, um, it put me off totally. And then uh, I'd rather uh, be behind the scenes and make sure that we restructure uh, and, and make sure football becomes the winner and we fix that problem that we had, we have, you know, uh, 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 of not really uh, uh, not, not 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 producing uh, enough uh, players and not being successful with the national teams, you know, and not getting players overseas. I think for me it's a huge uh, problem, and 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 I know uh, uh, and I've seen uh, uh, what were the problems. So I would have rather. Uh, join the structures, you know, of our associations in football, and, and fixing the structures to to bring um, uh, success, not only uh, in the national team, but uh, but even 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 the lower uh, structures, you know, the under 17s, the under 23. So, which is very important. Thank you, my man. I hope uh, you answered it. Oh, 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 oh,